Well, I'm back again. For some reason, I can't seem to stop putting videos on YouTube. Anyway, what are we doing in this video? Well, this whole monitor setup here, I think, needs to change. I've been getting sore neck and sore back problems for quite a while, and I finally decided that it's probably uh, monitor-related. Um, with my diagnosis of MS about a year ago, uh, working has been a problem, so I've ended up spending a lot of time on the computer. So I've decided it's time to uh, work on this whole setup, uh, as you will have seen from my previous video with the extraction venting system. Um, so I've had some, some neck and some back issues, so I'm starting to look at why that might be. So uh, I made this monitor bracket a while ago. We can probably have a look over the back if I don't headbutt my desk. And we can see roughly here, there's some six mil stuff. And you can see the frame down the back there, maybe. So uh, that was all out of laser cut 6mm MDF. Crucially, I forgot to add an angle adjustment when I designed the bracket. Um, but that's not so much of a problem. I've got it at a reasonably good angle. I just have to hunch down a little bit. Um, crucially, about 100 millimeters. So I found I have a 100 millimeter gap here. I can lift this whole thing up. I have about 130 mils to play with here. And for the Americans, when I say mils, I'm talking about millimeters. Uh, anyway. Um, so, I've got a design here that's going to uh, go together in several sections. Now, my laser cutter can't cut a 900mm piece in one length. So, if I zoom these bits in here, you can see what I'm doing. So, I'm doing in a top section and two pieces for a bottom. And I'm having this little keyway that can clip in a bit like a puzzle piece. With these pieces here, and they should all hold themselves together. Uh, especially once it's all glued. Then I've got some acrylic pieces, because I plan to have a little acrylic display shelf here uh, for displaying some of these things, like my centenary Gallipoli thing with a bit of sand from the beaches of Gallipoli. Um, uh, 556 shell uh, that I set in resin and cocked up the laser cutting on. That was one I picked up from the uh, local show uh, in 2006 when I was there as a reservist, a recruit I might add. I didn't get much past that phase because of some of the side effects of what I now know is MS. Uh, but we'll go into that later. So, these bits will be the acrylic windows um, that's going to go on. Uh, there will also be an acrylic window on the back here. I'm going to have two little drawers for my notepad and a few other loose bits and pieces. Um, and that means the light can shine through from the back and I don't have to run lights all the time. In the middle, I'm going to have two control panels to move switches and whatnot because I have a bunch of switches, like here, here, and um, up along here, and here, and along there, and um, yeah, all over the place. I've got lots of switches, so I wanted a couple of modular panels that I can rip out and update as need be to fill that gap. So hopefully all this little junk here that I've got in the habit of laying around here, including like one of the many, many legacy pins I have, uh, along with the Anzac pins, I've got heaps of them. So yeah, we'll get all them put up there. And at some point we might pull my uh, badge collection down just to show you anyway, if you're interested in that kind of thing. Uh, my USB hub can pretty well stay where it is. Um, now, there's a nifty little thing. I'm going to put a little magnetic flange on here so I can pull things off, put it in and put it back. So that my apprentice doesn't figure out how to get in there. I have to be sneaky with her. She's very smart. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get on with this because I've got lots of laser cutting to do and I've got all this spread out into a few files. So I've got one, two, three, four, five sheets to cut. So that's going to take a little while on the laser cutter, especially with six mil. It's at the limit of what that laser can cut. It's going to take some time. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how much of that I'm going to time lapse because I don't know how much 4K video I can record onto this thing. So uh, I might have to find an actual time-lapse app one of these days. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get geared up and go out to the laser cutter because I've just spent like the last six hours working on this. Um, I've had to take a few breaks. I can't work at my normal pace anymore. It's really frustrating. So yeah, let's just uh, let's go fire up that laser. All right, so we're hiding out in the workshop at the moment. I haven't fired up any of the extraction fans yet. I'm just checking my sheet uh, that I first planned to first cut, um, and this will be the first 6mm sheet. So let's uh, plot this to the laser cutter. 
going to steal my settings from the previous plot and uh, what are we going to do? We want to offset by about 10 mil in either direction. Um, in fact, a little bit less than that on the top. So yeah, 10 mil from the Y axis. I'm going to go about 5 mil from the top. All right, let's over to the laser cutter. Let's uh, wander over there. All right, we have our um, 6 mil MDF sheet in. It's uh, screwed down to a spoil sheet, which is why we have to come in around about 10 mil and take some of this junk out of the way. Um, we've given everything a rundown with the air compressor. Uh, the next step, we need to autofocus in an average area of the sheet. So we'll go over here and we'll autofocus everything. That will run up till it hits this little autofocus pin and then it knows it's in the correct focal distance. Now this stuff takes a long time to cut. I've got to run this thing almost to 0 0.02 speed. So we're going to go and edit the file here for a minute and uh, we'll show you what we do with that. So I'm going to edit the vector mode settings and 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.7 is usually great for 3mm stuff um, but we're going to have to go considerably slower, about 0 0.2 speed for this um, which is quite slow and uh, if I was to record the whole process of all these sheets uh, on my camera at the moment I'd run out of space at 4K so you're just going to have to take my word for it that this machine is actually going to cut it so yeah all right, uh, we're going to go, I'll run you through the startup process first. Um, and there might be a bit of noise, so I hope you can hear me through this. All right, the startup procedure. Well, first order of duty, because we have the auxiliary door open, I need to put some magnets here to convince the machine that the door is actually shut or it won't turn the laser on. So now I've got the magnets in. We're going to shut the lid and see if the door light goes out, which it has not. So we'll shuffle these magnets in the other polarity and the door light has gone out. We can test that by lifting the door slightly, seeing if the door light comes on. Okay, that's good. Now we need to check that our air lines are connected. We've got for air assist. We'll wander through the junk that is my workshop. We have a bit of air. We'll start that. And now we need to do the noisy bit. And I've got hearing protection on now. Um, got to fire up the extraction. Here is extraction. Okay, good. And it's time to start. You can see here the laser's working away. And uh, we'll have a look under the gap here, see if we can see it. Maybe. There's our laser right there, in the distance. All right, so now we wait. We've got uh, probably about 15, 20 minutes to wait here. Maybe a bit longer, maybe half an hour. But uh, you can see how long that's taking. So yeah, we'll check back in soon. Okay, so that took uh, a smidgen over an hour <laughs> and uh, towards the end I've wiped it up now I started getting a little bit of water through my airline which means I've got to bleed my compressor um, I had a bit of a focal issue here and uh, you can probably see from the corner here I may have misaligned the bed when I did that you want to focus pin try to focus on this bit of material here instead of this a little bit close to the edge so yeah all right I'm going to see if I can get these off the bed. Alright, so I've broken these bits out. Um, some of these are going to need a little bit of cleaning. Um, these actually came out a lot better than I thought it were defocused in the corner. Um, we've got one of the dog bones out. Uh, the other one is, um, yeah, I'm going to, just going to have to recut that. I realise I'm going to need four of them anyway. But uh, yeah, the dog bone is going to fit in the slot to join the halves together just nicely. Uh, the next step, we have to measure up our remaining offcuts. Um, so we've got 600 mil wide, which is good. It's a full sheet width, and I need to work out the shortest section here. 
this is going to be fun one handed so I've got about 330mm at its closest let's say 325 alright now I've got to rearrange my uh, second sheet and see if I can fit sheets 2 and 3 on the left over alright let's do that alright so I've plotted out the size of the remaining material and that's uh, this section here on the perimeter uh, and I'm trying to do this uh, one handed here which is not as easy alright so let's get rid of our perimeter so that should be all our final pieces and I'm doing three more dog bones so it should be just about right I'm hoping this dog bone method is going to work to join it and that's a phrase I've come up with but uh, let's plot this and let's use the same settings as we did last time no mercury 3 that looks right in the bed area um, I'm going to come 10 mil off each corner um, because I'm pretty sure I had that much to play with um, let's just check the preview area it looks like that's going to fit within the bed um, at 635 I've got a 600 mil sheet I'm going to apply that so it doesn't lose it and I'm just going to go back here a couple of steps and make sure I had that much room now I thought I'd just give you another look at uh, how the autofocus happens so uh, my autofocus pins are smidgen dirty but that's okay alright we're autofocused that's good um, now uh, I'm going to return this to its home, so let's go function, recall you back to where you need to be. Okay, now, uh, I've got, let's go back to the actual console. Um, it hasn't loaded my second drawing, so when this happens, um, the hotfix, <laughs> unplug, replug. There's a whole computer in this thing. It's actually a rather oversized motherboard for it. All the stepper controllers and everything are on one board so let's resend our plot and I bet you two of them will come up now oh, here we go our six mil sheet model 2 is good so we need to go down to here and we need to select this one edit the vector mode and we need to slow it down to 0.2 mil speed okay so I got about 10 minutes into the job and the laser stopped working I'm not sure why I restarted the job and the laser does work you can see here it'll fire up again so unfortunately to get to this point in the job I've just got to let it run through again so it's about a 10 minute setback okay so while we've got a moment or two for everything to just uh, shut down and be quiet uh, I'm going to show you how this dog bone method works I've only got one of these at the moment now you'll notice when lasers cut they cut with a slight taper because obviously the further away from the focal point you get the more the beam diverges so I can put this in upside down which means it slots in with a taper and we can drop it in nice and firmly and I've got a good, a good firm fit now these are going to be pressed against the other layers anyway so the chances that these are going to pop up are very minimal um, but they, you can pull them apart a little bit like that but again the taper then collides um, but a little bit of glue and uh, a piece of material stuck across the top of that it's going to work very nicely uh, I've had to clean a couple of these up very roughly um, I might recut one of them in the future but they are going on the back so I don't care too much if they look funky this is going to sit right here in the locating slot um, again this one was a little bit rough coming out because I misaligned the bed there you go that looks a little bit better and then we're going to have some stays in this position, this position, another one here, another one there, and another one there. Um, these will all go together. These two central sections are going to be the switch bay. And if I can do this one handed, let's try this again. I really should have prepared this a little bit better. This one's a bit firmer. <laughs> and uh, where are we? That section there. So that will show you starting to show you how the actual shape of the unit's looking okay so 58 minutes on and this puts us well over the uh, limit for noise pollution at this time of night so uh, I'm just lucky I'm uh, quite friendly with my neighbors so uh, yeah this will be it for the night I'm gonna pry these out and test assemble 
um, and then have a think about how I'm going to glue this because I didn't think about that. My wood glue is expired so I'll have to dig around and see what else I've got. Alright, well we have a massive pile of bits and pieces and dog bones and things with holes of dog bones in them and all this stuff. So uh, I think I'm going to take it inside and uh, do a test assembly and then maybe call it a night because it's, uh, it's getting on there. All right, we'll be inside in a minute. All right, so the time has come to test assemble everything. This bit, I will time lapse because it won't take about six hours. So uh, yeah, let's get cracking. Okay, it's test assembled without glue. There's potential I won't need glue for this. The whole thing holds together quite firmly. And this dog bone method of sandwiching everything together is going to work just nicely. So I've still got acrylic bits to do and some drawers to do, but I'm going to have loads of room for switch panels. So I can put all the really big deep switches and panels and all the old raft base radar stuff I've got laying around. So I might even leave it like this and I'll just wick in some glue or find some nice thin stuff. Maybe even super glue might do the job. It's pretty porous stuff. So it'll be good. Alright, some 12 hours or so have passed. It's the next morning and uh, I'm up to the gluing stage. Now I stopped to take uh, probably about a half hour to have a think about this. I'm a little bit raspy this morning. You're going to have to deal with a change in voice. I'm sorry. Um... The plan was originally to screw the base of this down to this little uh, island here and then put the monitor on top and uh, assemble as I went. Um, but I'm thinking this is actually holding together without glue really, really well. So I think I'm going to glue everything together in situ. I'm going to drill a hole through the top and then screw it down that way. Um, and so I think I'm going to apply some glue just to let it wick into these joints. I was going to use wood glue. But it's holding together so solidly, I think I can wick some nice thin super glue in. Uh, and I'm going to have to use super glue anyway when it comes to the acrylic because wood glue and acrylic don't mix, whereas super glue mixes with all these materials quite nicely. And if I keep the air moving, I won't get any funny fingerprints on the acrylic. So, yeah, it's time to uh, stick some glue in once I get this open. Well, the top busted off, but that doesn't matter. Anyway, we'll wick a little bit of this into all the key joints. Okay, well the time has come to cut some acrylic. I've still got the scratch guard paper on this. Uh, and I'm going to do one piece at a time and shift the acrylic around. And I've given my autofocus pin a bit of an adjustment after last night too. So uh, at some point very soon I'm going to have to recalibrate this entire bed after my little cock up over in the corner here. So yeah. Alright, uh, let's get this design loaded up.
right, so 16 minutes and 20 seconds have passed. <coughs> and you can tell that 3 mil is a lot quicker to cut. So I have all the extra bits. <coughs> Excuse me. The only bits I'm missing now are the switch panels, which I'm going to do them after I get everything assembled and I'll look at what switches I've got. But for now, we've got uh, the main bits to finish the structure. So uh, let's get them lifted out and we'll go back and start assembling. Alright, now, sorry about the background noise, I've got to leave the laser running because um, I've still got some more stuff to cut. But in the meantime, um, I've got a few quick little things to do. This is the end plate and I've got some magnets to mount in that. Um, and but before I do that, uh, these two facades, I need to put some threaded inserts in them. Alright, so we're back inside and I have a pile of pieces. Now this end that we're looking at um, is the end that is going to be closed and I should somewhere here have a wooden piece for that. No, I've left it in the shed. Alright, I'm back. So here's this piece here. Carefully measured so that these bits match up perfectly. Okay, so it looks like screaming did the trick and a little bit of super glue as well. And uh, more so just um, putting it in the way I had originally intended. Okay, there's a little bit of a bow in here, but that's all right. It'll work um, as a bit of a spring action for the drawers to come in and out. Or, you know, whatever, that's my excuse. I'm going to stick with that. All right, now it's time to glue some magnets in the other end uh, before I put some acrylic in. So let's flip this around. All right, so it's magnet time. So I've got some of these little... 10 mil diameter magnets and if I've done this right there's a little taper and these should just wedge into that um, now if I can find something non-magnetic to push it in with um, I believe I made some wooden tweezers I did too, here they are these might work for handling magnets that looks like that's going to sit in there nice and flush and a little daub of super glue might wick its way around the edge there. I'm a little bit heavy on the super glue, but yeah, that happens. And I'm not worrying about magnetic polarity at the moment. Um, I will cross that bridge when I get to it. All right, so the next bit is a little trickier. This is where we put the acrylic in. Now I've got a little 80 mil fan here. I'm gonna fire that up and uh, that will keep some air moving because whenever you glue acrylic um, any fingerprint you leave, any bit of oil, anything like that uh, is going to leave a fingerprint and uh, I want this to look clean and sexy um, incidentally that's also how they use uh, how they detect fingerprints on glass and some other materials because um, a fact that you may or may not know super glue was originally designed as a military uh, wound dressing uh, during wartime so you could uh, basically field stitches uh, and it still actually does work very well for that in fact I have a medical grade super glue in my first aid kit for exactly that purpose it's called liquid skin um, but yeah uh, back when I did forensics um, way back in high school days uh, yeah we picked up um, fingerprints using the super glue method as well now this is nice and clean I'm being really careful not to touch this we want a test fit to make sure it's going to fit in. Okay, so this bit here, or these two bits that I have, these are designed to be um, little facades. They hold the captive screws, or the, what are we, um, threaded inserts would be the terminology. Being a bit distracted while I try and squash these in here. Um, and that then means I can make a removable control panel 
um, so if I want to change it or upgrade it or attach something I can unscrew the panel and take it off. Well I was just moving this uh, fan along a bit and I discovered that the wires had shorted and uh, ran up here and my fuse warning light has come on. So the system has worked as designed. I just wanted to point that out. That's what it's meant to do. So I'm going to dig out a spare fuse and go and have some lunch so I stop making mistakes and we'll be back. Alright, so that's the desk area cleaned off. Now I have to unscrew these and uh, get this lifted up. Which means I need to find my long square drive driver. I don't know where that is. Okay, well I've cleared my vertical space and all my spare bits and pieces off there. Cleared some room. I found my backup long square drive bit. And I've got a box of a thousand square drive self tappers, so we should be right. I will have to drill a couple of holes in the top of this, but I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. For now, I need to get the monitors off. Well, it fits now, and I'm kind of regretting not putting some wrinkle finish paint on it, but the only paint I've got left at the moment is matte finish black, and with some sun coming in here, that would be just pretty much an instant radiant heater, especially with summer coming up. So, um, yeah, wrinkle finish blue would have been nice, but... Sends up my... Sounds like another phone's going off anyhow, I don't know where that's come from. Anyway, um, let's get some screws in and get a drill bit. Right, we have the screws already in, everything's in nice and firmly. It's time to get the monitors back on the top. I thought I'd stop for a moment just to put all my boxes up the top and uh, shockingly they fit. It actually worked out. I'm really happy because that was an oversight. Um, everything sits nicely. I've put a couple of keepsakes in here um, for the moment. Um, I'm going to put a little LED strip in there later on just for a small bit of lighting. And um, yeah, the box sits there for now. I'll redo them shortly. These will be my two electronics bays. Um, so we'll be able to do some stuff with that. The monitors are at actually really nice viewing angle now. I can sit, if I put the camera at my head height, this is about where I'm viewing it. So it's actually a perfect angle. That's good. All right. Well, lunch is done for. I've had that. I've got a bunch of spare switches and I'm designing a switch panel, which we'll have a quick look. Um, starting to design my first switch panel here. There's a lot to go and a lot of thinking. But I want this end panel done, and I got a screw in the wrong spot, as you can see here. But uh, we need to put these magnets in, and I need to get them in the right orientation. So we're going to need to juggle around all the junk on my desk, because, you know, it's halfway through the month, and my desk doesn't stay cleaner for more than a week. Well, I just released my uh, little gremlin-like apprentice from her government-mandated uh, uh, camp. And uh, the sun's moved a little bit in the sky, and I wanted to have a look at my little display area in the sun. It's actually looking just nice. I think that's going to be a good little display area, especially once I put some little lights in there. So uh, this is an old uh, system I designed as a toy for my apprentice quite some time ago that she never really took a great interest in. So I'm going to recycle these uh, switches and dials. Um, these came out of an old uh, radar station that was scrapped and replaced at a nearby military base and it showed up at the scrapyard. Now most of these dials and switches were made in Australia which is probably very hard to find these days. So uh, yeah, I'm planning on uh, recycling as many of these as I can. And these are also serviceable. You can pull them apart, replace the switches, replace the globes. And in fact, I have a full box full of spare parts for all of these here as well. Um, and you can even, replace the little acrylic the little clear acrylic inlays in here <clears throat> my apprentice has come to say hello how are you going apprentice um aka distractor actually let's just uh, turn around and have a look at what she did um, I'm the apprentice. i can make the daddy make circles this is our next repair job this is her handiwork from the shelf at her are we got uh, a problem 
Yes. Meet because... the broke to the left. Yep. The fetching line. So that's come home with us to fix. So yeah, that'll be an interesting job. We might even do a video on that as well. Not even. Yeah. And we need some sticky tape. I think we'll need more than sticky tape for that. Yeah. Anyway, I think I'll train her on the best way to do that. Anyway, let's get some of these dials off and figure out which ones we're going to use. Now, I had planned on using this FTC switch, but it won't go in all the way, and if you listen, there's something rattling loose. Now, these have four little mini grain of wheat globes in them, and uh, I reckon one of them's come loose and is floating around. So we're going to uh, take the front off this and see if there's anything wrong with it. So let's have a look in here. So there's our two spring returns. Let's see if we can get some light on this. Hold on a moment. Alright, this should give you a slightly better view. So down here there are two springs that are the spring return pins. And one of them seems to be jammed. And uh, let's have a look here, see if I can fit this other one in here. That one's fine. So I think one of the spring returns is jamming. Um, and they're also contacts as well. They're almost like a pogo pin. So let's have a look in here. There's something wrong with one of them. Let's have a look here. The, this is the light globe assembly. And there's something rattling loose in here. So uh, let's see if we can remove these light globes. Maybe one of them has broken and busted in there. So lift one of these up gently. Once I've got them lifted up gently, I'll get some tweezers under here. Because one of those globes feels a lot more loose than the others, and that could be the globe. So let's find my tweezers. Now, there's ones were donated by Tinkerman Mick. These are actually really handy ones. So we can lift this up. All right. So that globe looks okay. We'll drop that gently. I'll give you a close look at one of them in a moment. So we get all four of these out. Why don't we have a close look at this one? Let's bring the autofocus up a little bit, and we can see here there's a good filament in there. I can't tell if that filament is still good. It might be blown. I have a bunch of spares. Um, I'm tempted to modify one of these and convert it to um, LED at some stage too. You can probably notice I'm having some dexterity issues manipulating these tweezers too. So that globe seems to be fine. I'll read the rating off the globe in a minute as well. Let's have a look here. So all four globes seem to be fine. And I normally don't touch these with my fingers. But it's an OL380. One of these had a voltage rating on it, I believe. This one, I think, might have been one that's been replaced. Well, they, well, they do run at a comfortable temperature at 12 volts. They might have been intended to run at 24, but I'm not sure. And we notice this has two green filters and two white filters in here. And so we can switch it between green and red. And there's still clearly something floating around in there. I'm not sure what that is, so it's time to disassemble a little bit further. This cover we can use to replace the little, the little name tag in there, which has been done with impression lettering, which I understand is getting very hard to find these days. Let's pick this up with a bit of blue tack. There we go. Then I can pick it up. So let's see. Is there anything still in here? As I said, these are quite a serviceable uh, device. You can pull them apart and strip them right down. So let's take the retaining screw out here and see what's in the diffusing area. This has turned into a bit of a side video, but uh, whenever you get a long build like this, there's going to be a lot to do. So. Now let's just separate these two out. Ah, one of the clear filters has come out and has gotten loose. So we can reseat that filter, I believe. Shouldn't be too difficult to do. Yeah. So it looks like the original glue holding that in has come off. So we might put a little touch of super glue on there and put that back in situ once I get my tweezers on the job. So where's my famous super glue? It is right here. And I had that on hand because I expected that might be the case. Just the tiniest little bit. Normally I would apply that with a pin to avoid getting that big drip on the desk like I just had. But the desk is a sacrificial top. It's easily replaced. Let's put this diffuser back on there. Get it nicely into place. 
Now my finger is stuck to the side. That is not ideal, nor is any of that. So let's get some of that super glue off quickly before it sets and upsets the tolerance. I did give this a spray with PTFE dry lube before, and I'm happy that I did that because the super glue is not sticking very well to those areas. But anyway, we have all four of these. We'll let that set and we'll be back for the reassembly. Well, the busy time of evening has struck and I had to do a few things whilst there was a lot of noise going on. There's still a bit going on now, but I thought I'd show you the uh, nearly finished product. We've got one module here is, um, the switches are in, um, I've still got one to add, I need a double pole one there. Nothing's wired on the back yet, and we have a little OLED display here. Uh, another module to come, and uh, these little drawers that hold all the extra bits and pieces that come out of here. So um, they're just stacked in drawers. I finally got them measured right. And uh, the dud ones fit up under here just. So they're handy. My museum section is working nicely. It comes off and it just magnets itself back on. All these buttons all push in. You can flick them all on and off. Now oddly my... But LED wait, there's more. Just before I leave you guys, I thought I'd point out I had a sleepless night last night and I got a little busy. Not everything's wired up yet. I've still got the NBN modem and the four auxiliaries to wire up and uh, all of these. But uh, let's put this in here. I've got an Arduino. I'll show you what that's all about in a minute. But let's put everything in the cabinet and uh, just give you a quick run through. Okay, I've had to break out the um, tripod because uh, I'm getting the shakes at the end of the day. Anyway, I have my four lighting controls here, as you'll probably notice, and these are for under desk light and my 3D printing area. I have display lights over in the corner there for the display area. They come on and off, and I'll be working on that again soon. I've got uh, illumination for these buttons, um, and they do have two color illumination in them. We'll go over that later. I've got my inlet fan, which you'll hear, and I've got my outlet fan, which you might not hear. That's attached to this uh, tubing over the side, which you can't see. And uh, now I've got my audio switching between the PC and the TV. These will be for my NBM modem and the battery backup. Four auxiliaries for whatever we use them for. And my auxiliary computer, which is going to be an Arduino. It's going to be used this in, using this little OLED display down here. Uh, this is just a demo program, but we'll have it run something else. Uh, in the future. Anyway, this is probably going to turn into a two-parter because I've just, I, I really, I'm done. I've got so much other stuff I need to do now, uh, but my immediate issue is solved. And uh, we'll do the wiring. Maybe if I can convince Tinkerman Mick to come, he might help uh, wire this up too and move stuff around. It'd be a lot easier with two people. But anyway, we'll uh, cross that bridge when it happens. And uh, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed it. Leave a few comments. I've got... Uh, Lots and lots and lots of videos happening here, so uh, 
yeah, we'll find out what happens there. But um, anyway, uh, on to the next video, I guess. I think my energy is done for a couple of days on this project, though. But anyway, I'll see you next time.